Welcome to Audit the Audit, where we sort out the who and what and the right and wrong of police. Ah, uh, probably not. Maybe? Interactions. This episode covers unlawful orders, obedience to authority, and officer conduct. It's and it's brought to us from the public record of the city of Keller, Texas. You can find a link to the original video in the description below. This Before we dive into the interaction, I want to give a big thanks to the sponsor of this episode, Surfshark. We all know that VP and even on recommend watching to the end so that you can leave this episode fully informed of the legal and psychological nuance surrounding this encounter. Uh -uh. 320, go ahead and send me a unit when you got available. Hey, roll your window back down. What's up? My name is Sergeant Schmont, the Cal Police Department. The reason is being stopped today. You made a wide right turn and you turned from 1709 to 377. Any reason why you're rolling your window up when I walk up to this car? No, sir. You had been driving it down for the past mile. I just rolled it up. All right, step out of the car for me. Why you did what? He did what? 377. Any reason why you're rolling your window up when I walk up to this car? No, sir. You had been driving it down for the past mile. I just rolled it up. All right, step out of the car for me. Step out. You gotta shut that window. Open it now. Step out. Right here. Face that direction. Jesus. Face that direction. Put your hands right here behind your back. Don't move. Do you understand? Why are you acting so suspicious? Because I'm scared. Well, what, you're on your window up, but I'm walking up on scene for a routine traffic stop. Ain't nothing going on. You roll your window up. What does that look like to me? I mean, I'm just rolling it up because I uh, it's my, for my safety. For your safety? Yeah. No. Nothing. I rolled up hey. my window. Take off. That's my dad. No, sir. Yeah. I rolled, I rolled up my window. 320, give me a unit code now. And he got mad because I rolled up my window. Step right here. I rolled it up. Back Step up. right feet. Well, that's what happened, huh? Yeah. You're about to I be rolled. arrested for blocking the roadway if you don't park and get out. I rolled, I rolled Park over there. He said I can. It's my right. You are interfering with my blocking the roadway. I'm pretty sure he can park there or stay there. He's not allowed to be right there. He's right next to the curb. Job. You need to go park over there. I rolled up my window like you said. It was my right to roll up my window. No, it's not. Yeah. Sergeant Shamanic tells Mr. Puente that he does not have a right oh, to roll go up his window good. during a traffic stop but there are no laws that specifically forbid doing so. Although citizens are well within their rights to roll up their window during a traffic stop, doing so will likely result in being extracted from the vehicle. In the 1977 Supreme Court case of Pennsylvania versus Mims, the court held that officers may order the driver of a stopped vehicle to exit the vehicle if they have been lawfully detained. The court reasoned that an officer's order to exit the vehicle constituted a minimal intrusion into the liberty of the detained citizen, and the safety offered to an officer by such an order far outweighed the potential inconvenience to the detainee. As noted by the court, I quote, what that. is at most a mere inconvenience cannot prevail when balanced against legitimate concerns for the officer's safety. Okay, I don't agree with the officer in the, in the video, but I think this is reasonable, especially if you're in Texas and, and a lot of people have guns and From shit. Sergeant especially if your windows are tinted. You never know what can happen. You could just get blasted behind the window instantaneously and just, you're done so. Mr. Puente's decision to roll up his window may very well have appeared to be suspicious behavior, and the sergeant was well within his authority to order Mr. Puente out of his vehicle. All that said, Mr. Puente obeyed Sergeant Shamanic's order to roll the window back down and appeared to be peacefully complying with all of his requests. Once Mr. Puente began to exit the car, he attempted to roll his window back up so that he could lock his vehicle without the officer being able to see inside of it, and the sergeant orders him to keep the window down. Mr. Puente was under no legal obligation to obey the sergeant's order to keep the window down as he exited the vehicle, and it was not unreasonable for Mr. Puente to want to secure his vehicle before exiting it to speak with the sergeant. Oh. 320, we've gotten back up and around. Do you have any weapons on you? No, sir. Is your ID in your wallet? Yes, sir. Why on earth are you acting like this? I'm just nervous, man. Look, okay, I'm it was sorry. a routine traffic stop, all yes. right? I've never met you before. Yes, I know. And then the first thing you do is you roll up your window like that, okay? I thought it was allowed so we can roll up my window and hand what, out my license to you. How do you think it would look to me if you're rolling up your window when you walk up? I guess suspicious a little bit. Suspicious. It looks like a Here, window Mr. Going Puente up. admits like... that his actions may have appeared suspicious after being questioned by Sergeant Shamanic, and perfectly demonstrates why the right to remain silent is such an important aspect of police interactions. 
The factors associated with Mr. Puente's admission extend far beyond the legal system and stem largely from the psychological elements at play whenever an individual interacts with an authority figure. One of the most famous studies of obedience in psychology was carried out in 1961 by the renowned Yale psychologist Stanley Milgram. Uh, yes. Mr. Milgram wanted to investigate whether Germans were particularly obedient to authority figures, as this was a common explanation for... And they drew lots to find out who would be the learner and who would be the teacher. However, the drawing process was fixed so that the participant would always assume the role of the teacher, and the learners were actually aware of the study and merely pretending to be a participant. It, the it, teacher it, it, and the it, it, learner it, 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 were then taken into separate rooms that were directly across from one another, and the teacher was informed that the learner was outfitted with electrodes that would deliver a shock whenever activated by the generator being controlled by... I like, I can't, outfitted for rooms that were directly across from one another. And the teacher was informed that the learner was outfitted with electrodes that would deliver a shock whenever activated by the generator being controlled by the teacher. The learner was tasked with learning a list of paired words. And whenever the learner gave a wrong answer, the teacher was instructed by the experimenter to deliver a shock. With each wrong answer, the intensity of the shock increased, with the scale of the shock eventually reaching a fatal level. In reality, the learner was merely pretending to be shocked from the other room and was instructed to give mostly wrong answers. Eventually, the learner would stop responding altogether, but the experimenter pressed the teacher to continue shocking the learner in the absence of an answer. When the study was concluded, two-thirds of the teachers had continued to shock the learner to the highest level of 450 volts, and all the participants continued to 300 volts. The results of this study demonstrated that ordinary people are extremely likely to follow the orders of authority figures, even to the extent of killing an innocent human being. Obedience to authority plays a role in every police interaction. And Mr. Puente likely <clears throat> felt that answering Sergeant Shimonic's questions was required of him. It is safe to assume that Mr. Puente only agreed <clears throat> with the sergeant to avoid the consequences of not agreeing. And this is a classic example of how obedience is taken advantage of by members of law enforcement. Although I highly doubt that the sergeant was aware of the psychological aspects at play and maliciously took advantage of them, this part of the encounter demonstrates both a dire need to educate officers on the psychology of detainees and the need to educate citizens on their right to remain silent. As Sergeant Shimonic was questioning Mr. Puente, Mr. Puente's father, Marco Puente, walks to the sidewalk opposite of the interaction and continues filming his son's interaction. So Which is it's even fine. more suspicious, right? You've been cruising. It's a hot day. You've been cruising right through window down. Yes, sir. And the first thing I do when I walk up is you roll your window up. Yes, sir. Then I say step out of the car, and then you proceed to roll your window up all the way. And I can, well, I can I no longer see you. I can ro roll my window and then shut the door and lock it. That's by what who? I was told. By who? By my dad. Okay. By the, the law, the government. Okay. When you're doing that, you're taking away. I can't see anything. Mm -hmm. Apart from the fact it's it's it, it's rude I, it, it's rude is it not i'm trying to have a yes. conversation with you you roll up the window and get it wrong. i'm trying to do my job and now you're taking away just watch him what? yep ready yet arrest him for, what? for blocking the roadway what yep Sergeant Shimonic orders Officer Unkit Thomer to arrest Mr. Marco for obstructing the roadway, and Officer Thomer unquestioningly what? complies. Texas Penal Code 42.03 criminalizes the act of intentionally, knowingly, or recklessly obstructing a public street, or disobeying a reasonable request or order to move issued by a member of law enforcement. Unlike many states, Texas officers have been afforded the authority to arrest citizens for petty crimes that carry no jail time such as traffic infractions. In the 2001 Supreme Court case of Atwater versus City of Lago Vista, the court held that a citizen's Fourth Amendment rights are not violated I mean, when the subject Texas is arrested is just... for driving without a seatbelt, and that such an arrest for a misdemeanor that is punishable only by a fine does not constitute an unreasonable seizure under the Fourth Amendment. This ruling authorized officers to make a custodial arrest of a citizen without balancing costs and benefits or determining whether the arrest was necessary. There are only three motor vehicle offenses that Texas officers cannot effectuate an arrest under. Broken speeding, ca open container violations, and texting while driving. Which, what? ironically enough, are also the top three causes of car accidents in the U.S. 
the Atwater ruling opened the floodgates for malicious what? and unnecessary arrests. And according to a 2019 study conducted by order of the Sandra Bland Act of 2017, <laughs> more than 45,000 Texas drivers were arrested at traffic stops for Class C misdemeanors in 2018 alone. If Mr. Marco had been- Wait, he said what? How? Act of 2017, more than 45,000 Texas drivers were arrested at traffic stops for Class C misdemeanors in 2018 alone. If Mr. Marco had been legitimately violating Code 42.03, then Sergeant Shamanic would have been within his authority to arrest him. We will discuss whether or not Mr. Marco actually violated the code in a moment. I wish that we didn't know the number, but the ratio of how many traffic stops to, to arrest while doing a traffic stop. But the point there. of this section is to highlight the fact that Texas officers have nearly unfettered authority to arrest citizens for any violation, no matter how trivial or victimless that violation may be. After ordering Officer Tomer to arrest Mr. Marco, Sergeant Shamanic orders Mr. Puente to sit on the curb while he assists Officer Tomer. When the sergeant approaches Mr. Marco and grabs his arm, a small it, scuffle breaks out, which results in Mr. Marco being thrown to the ground, maced, and arrested. Once the officers place Mr. Marco into the back of a patrol car, Sergeant Shamanic relays his version of events to a fellow officer. Let's compare the sergeant's story to what actually took place. So, kids acting nervous as can be. I said, buddy, step out of the car. Your seats start rolling out the car, and I thought he was going to drive off on me. Well, the door open, step, he steps out, no issue. I'd go to detain him. Dad is cruising on the road, south of the middle of the road. I said, you leave. You leave, you leave. He's feeding so, son. No, this is neighbor that lives over here. He's feeding uh, son, telling him what to do. Step right here. I rolled it up. Back step up. right your feet. Well, that's what happened. And I said, okay. and I said, no, no, sir, you leave. I said, sir, if you don't, if you don't leave, I said, yeah, you're gonna be detained for, uh, for blocking the roadway here. Yeah. You're about to be arrested for blocking the roadway if you don't park and get out. And so then he proceeds to back up all the way, parks over there, and he, he walks up into my scene multiple times. I said, you're done. You're under arrest. Uh, you know what I don't like about this though, is that, is that. I'm gonna take him into custody for the track file. I feel like you could screen candidates that try to become police officers who are more pr more prone to become uh, uh to do a, a, a abuse of power or, stre or stretch their thing whenever they get mauled whatever right to get what they want i feel like it'd be pretty easy to screen them out to screen them out yet it, i mean i feel like they happen so often interference and uh he resisted so he got sprayed we're taking the ground he came out down the down there he's videoing us and now i guess we got family members here as you can see, the sergeant's version of events are a far stretch from what actually happened, and the sergeant's police report was filled with similar inaccuracies. Why? In the report, Sergeant Shamanic... Because the job description, I feel like, is like, serve and protect, and then also, uh, uh, you know, you're a peace officer. When you're trying to pull it your way to get what you want, not the law or the whatever, right? You're doing the exact opposite. You're serving yourself when it's the irony of the job because you're serving others and... It doesn't make it doesn't claims make sense. that Mr. Marco approached him from behind. It's ironic. It's ironic. The video shows that was untrue. The sergeant went as far as claiming that he did not notice Mr. Marco's vehicle when it approached, and that it wasn't until Mr. Marco yelled at him that he became aware of his presence. The sergeant also stated that Mr. Marco refused to move his vehicle after being ordered to do so, and that he remained in the roadway for an additional 30 seconds to continue yelling, which is a blatant lie. The report goes on to state that, due to officer safety, Sergeant Shamanic decided to arrest Mr. Marco for obstructing the roadway and obstructing governmental operations. Texas Penal Code 38.15 is the state's obstruction law, and even if the sergeant's story were true and Mr. Marco was yelling at the officers, this code provides an exception for any interruption, yeah, disruption, right. impediment, or interference that consists of speech only, which renders this charge invalid. Sergeant Shamanic's malicious behavior does not end there. And once his lieutenant arrived on the scene, the sergeant recounted his inaccurate story to his superior and informed him that he intended to arrest Mr. Puente for the wide turn violation so that he could search his vehicle without obtaining consent or probable cause. Kid right now is only detained to sit in the back of my car. We've had a very lengthy conversation. He's been reasonable. I'm quite certain there's narcotics in the car, so I think I'm going to arrest him for the wide right turn. He's got a history of narcotics. He's, he's telling me, give me all sorts of clues. So I think I'm going to arrest him for the wide right turn. The lieutenant authorizes Sergeant Shamanic to arrest Mr. Puente, and the sergeant searches the vehicle, but does not find any drugs or weapons. Mr. Puente was taken to jail, and his vehicle was towed. 
Following the encounter, the Keller Police Department launched a proactive internal investigation into the incident and eventually released the full body and dashcam footage along with all the paperwork from the investigation. The investigation resulted in Sergeant Shamanic being demoted to a patrol officer, with the opportunity to reapply for his sergeant position in one year. Officer Tomer did not face any disciplinary action. All charges against Mr. Marco were dropped, and all of the fines and fees associated with his arrest were refunded. Mr. Marco has filed a federal lawsuit against Officer Shamanic and Officer Tomer, which prompted Keller Police Chief Brad Fortune to personally apologize to Mr. Marco and admit that his officers were wrong. According to the New York Times, Mr. Marco accepted the chief's apology as a nice gesture, but also stated that he believed more needed to be done to hold the police accountable. The executive director of the Texas Municipal Police Association, Kevin Lawrence, told the New York Times that a lawyer with the association was monitoring the lawsuit against officers Shamanic and Tomer, but the group does not represent the Keller Police Department or have a lawyer involved in the litigation, despite the fact that both of the officers were members of the organization. He ironically went on to say, quote, This is one of those cases where I would say you may want to take a step back and not take the pleading at face value. At the time of writing this episode, the Keller City Council has announced a special executive session to take place on December 29th for a full briefing on the incident. And although that session is not included in this episode, you can find updates regarding the session's findings in the description below. Overall, Officer Shamanic, Officer Tomer, and the Keller Police Department get an F for arresting Mr. Marco when he committed no crimes, arresting Mr. Puente for no other reason than to search his vehicle, and for escalating what could have been a routine traffic stop into a physical altercation. Officer Shamanic abused the philosophy of officer safety and exercised poor discretion throughout the entirety of this interaction. Nothing he did during this encounter advanced the safety of his community, and much of his decision-making can be linked to his inflated ego and his efforts to justify his actions. Although officer safety is a legitimate concern during any police encounter, it should never be used to justify misconduct. And this type of behavior only serves to erode the public's trust in law enforcement and make it more difficult for other officers to legitimately justify their actions in the name of officer safety. The most troubling aspect of this encounter is the department's response to the officer's conduct. Much like the Revere Police Department's response to misconduct that I covered last week, the KPD's decision to demote Officer Shamanic rather than firing him conveys the message that officers who commit blatant acts of misconduct will be allowed to continue serving in their official capacity. And there's absolutely no justice in this decision. The internal affairs investigation resulted in nothing more than a PR stunt, and I struggle to see any option for justice other than Officer Shamanic's termination. If departments continue to perpetuate the notion that officers have the highest job security in America, then progress toward addressing the issues facing the American policing system will be significantly dampened, even more than they already are by nonsensical court rulings like the Atwood case. There is no excuse for Officer Shamanic's conduct or the department's lackluster response to that conduct. It will be interesting to see how the Keller City Council handles this situation. As for Mr. Puente and Mr. Marco, I cannot justify issuing a grade to their conduct, because they were both wholly out of control of every aspect of this interaction, and nothing they could have done differently would have made an impact on the outcome. There is very little to critique on the side of Mr. Marco and his son, and that's mostly due to the fact that they did not have an opportunity to contest Officer Shamanic's conduct. While it is true that Mr. Puente could have exercised his right to silence, his reluctance to do so stemmed from a well-established psychological ineptitude that was arguably out of his control. Mr. Puente was cordial and cooperative throughout the encounter, and despite being obviously mistreated by the officer, he complied with all of the officer's orders. I commend Mr. Puente for remaining calm and collected, and refusing to allow his emotions- What? F wave. To what dictate is F the outcome wave, of this bitch? encounter. Mr. Marco also deserves recognition for having the awareness to begin filming this interaction and not allowing Officer Shamanic to intimidate him or What is F wave, man? Or discourage him from recording. Nothing Mr. Marco did violated the law, and the department confirmed that by dropping all of the charges against him. Mr. Marco had no time to react to Officer Shamanic's decision to arrest him, and it makes sense that he would be somewhat resistant given that he was not able to process the logic of the officer's orders. Mr. Marco went from peacefully exercising his First Amendment right to record the police to being maced and arrested in a matter of seconds. And, instead of making an effort to reason with Mr. Marco, both of the officers jumped straight to physically restraining him without any legal justification. I have no doubt that Mr. Marco will fare well in the courtroom, and I commend him for following up this encounter with the proper legal action. 
John Lang here, the creator of Audit the Audit. If you've made it to the end of this episode, I would like to extend my personal thanks for taking the time to absorb all of the information surrounding this. Wait, this guy makes the video, but the other guy comments and the, the, the rates it? I don't get it. How does that work?